So, real quick, uh, here to talk about spatial news. Uh, building broader perspective through AR news widgets and enhanced production using spatial tools. Uh, my name is Hisham, I'm working with Mike Draskovich uh, and Andrew Lipman, Mike Hajang, and everyone at the Viral Communications Group. We say welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, you should rejoice because you are in the most connected time in history. You've never been more connected ever. Um, but yet, you don't necessarily feel connected to the world. And there's tons of reason for this, but let's think about it for a second. Um, are you good? Uh, sick. Awesome. So, we're looking at this map of the world news coverage for The Guardian in 2012. You can see there's a skew. Uh, this is after you take out the UK. You'll notice that there's a lot in North America, a lot in Europe. Um, so, a lot in North America, a lot in Europe. Um, hardly anything in South America. Why is this? Well, we know our news comes at us through a filter. But when you open up you know, The Guardian or any other website, it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like it's coming at you through a filter. It looks like a pretty neat, well-designed object. I think AR can really bring some interesting solutions to this problem. So if we think about, here's a global news widget, for example. So after this mantle pops up, you'll see this globe pops up. What we're doing is we're taking Reuters information and just mapping it to the globe. We think that that's pretty cool for four reasons. One, it's spatial. That means when you're looking at it, you're engaging your spatial cognition and your spa basically your spatial perception as well as your spatial memory. Second is it brings perspective. You not only know where the news is coming from, you, are the no, you know where the news is not coming from. Furthermore, by shrinking the planet, you get what's known as the astronaut effect. Um, you get to see countries that are next to each other, and you can see that they're neighboring, and that things that happen on a global scale can happen on a global scale. Third, it's interactive. You can zoom in on certain areas and see what pops up. And fourth, it's social. You get to share your experience going through it. But it's more than just the globe. If there are certain places that you really care about, or certain situations that are really important to you, you can take those. Uh, here's an example on the left, here's one for the Virgin Islands, and on the right, one for the Middle East. You can imagine taking these and putting them in places in your world, and physically adjoining them to them. So Mike has a really good saying, he says that you could do is you can take your news and put it on your desk, take your celebrity gossip, put it in your bathroom, um, giving context to the kind of things that you're seeing. Um, we think that's pretty cool, but I think it goes beyond just static news. Uh, what we could see is a future where we're actually talking about events. If you think for a second about the Princess Leia style hologram, that was an iconic moment in sci-fi. You felt for Princess Leia because she was projected by R2D2 right in front of you. What if we could do the same thing with events? Um, so here's an example of a basketball game. So we take the basketball game, we capture it from a single camera, no extra cameras were added, this is just taken from the feed from a basketball game. Um, and then what you can do is you can separate out the players. What's cool about that is you get to pause time, go backwards and forwards, copy and paste them, move them around, and make it a lot more interactive. It's kind of a new way of consuming basketball because it can also be very collaborative. We can all look at the same basketball court that's on someone else's desk. I think that's probably one of the coolest things about sports. You get to watch it with your parents when it's on a big TV. Even if you like sports or not, it's a way of you know, connecting in your family. Um, and I think that you could bring that back and you can extend that by having players play against dragons put on by your eight-year-old brother. So, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Now, for a journalist, you're not necessarily going to have the capacity to have you know, huge capture setups where you have a room and you want to capture from all these different directions. And you know, studios like ADI do really high quality 3D um, capture. But for a foreign correspondent, you can never imagine doing that. You can never imagine doing things inside. A lot of times you're capturing things outside. So what's really cool is in the future, we can definitely use things like the Views camera, which are these stereo 360 cameras and produce 3D content that you could shrink down. On the left, top left, we have just a YouTube video which is taken in stereoscopic 360. On the right, a pro like a product after capturing that, like processing that into 3D. So the reason we're bringing this up is because what you could have is a cool future wherein you know, a foreign correspondent can walk up with one of these views cameras, capture the area around, a block, a city block, even to perform an interview, and then transmit that to put on your desktop. What's interesting about that is you could have an interview with somebody that's not just showing up on a 2D screen. You could have the people who were interviewed literally have existed on your desk, bridging that gap that you normally have. Um, now, this also works for things that are not just physical. It also works for things that are ephemeral. For example, let's say talk radio and radio stations. People will listen to podcasts. Cool. Anybody listen to any AM stations anymore? Uh, you got some, okay, cool. Definitely worth listening to, they're talking about a lot of stuff you don't necessarily hear on FM radio. So, what we did to explore that was created the world's most expensive radio transceiver. Um, Rejecting a request for diplomatic immunity for Julian Assange. Ecuador's granted the WikiLeaks founder. 
protecting their civil liberties. He wants to do both, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Uh, we don't see any contradiction or confusion in that. In the Senate, Republican Rand Paul is threatening a filibuster over... So, okay, so that's cool because it runs in WebAR, so you can go to the website and run it. Um, it requires a marker, but, you know, eventually when our phones and AR, kick, AR core grow into a bigger consumer base, we won't need that anymore. But what we tried to do was say, can we take something ephemeral, something that we don't necessarily think about a lot, and convert it to something that people can actually see? And so we just, we just took a bunch of talk radio stations from around the country and put them on a map. And so you could just click on any of them anytime to hear them live. So you could listen to America in a way that you weren't necessarily able to do before. Uh, now, so far I've talked to you mostly about the consumption side of news. But in reality, there's a lot of production that I think VR and AR tools can really help out with. So here is, a, is basically a VR live production studio. Now imagine you are a, for, a, a reporter and you want to go in and you want to create live content. Normally that takes a truck with a bunch of people in the truck but that's not necessarily accessible. What if you could put on a headset and be in this live production studio where you can switch between cameras, create clips, and be directly tied into social media? On the left side, you'll see me interact with it in a second, is these giant one meter by one meter Twitter cards that are actual just Twitter feeds that you can go in and start projecting onto the main screen. What we like about this is you could have somebody in New York working with an editor in LA. You can essentially start you know, decompressing what the whole production pipeline process is like and you're lowering the barrier towards getting down to production. And that means you can have more channels, more content coming out of the same feeds, or just more stories being able to be told. I think that's pretty awesome. Now, I think that also trick works for AR. So a lot of times people are talking about creating AR and it's pretty difficult. And people are approaching it through 2D interfaces. You can imagine like Snapchat, Lens Studio, and others. And I think that's cool, but it doesn't necessarily take into account the fact that AR has a lot of spatiality to it. So what I want to show you guys is a take on, could you make, say, AR, AR animation more accessible to more people? Uh, so let's take another this. frame like that, and then I'll just have him maybe move his hand up like that, bring this one around like that, bring his head down like so, then take his elbow and stuff, bring it like that. And I'll, have, I'll save that frame, and then when I hit play, he'll dab! Isn't that dope? So, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So, this works on AR Core on your phone, so I'll have a demo that if you guys want to come try it. But what it does is it en enables you to do the whole process. Normally, when you do AR animation or any kind of animation, you got to rig the model, you got to go into Blender, you got to know how to convert from a 2D interface to 3D, save your keyframes, then play them out. But this enables you to do it on a one to one scale just by picking up the phone and grabbing certain parts of the object. We think that's pretty awesome. And you know what's awesome? We know that AR is cool. And one of the things I'm surprised by this conference is we haven't really got to this point of common understanding, but I think the next conference we will. AR has got to be a lot more than cool for any of us to have a job. And I think that we need to understand how we can bring meaning into AR. So I think if we can work on these four things, these three things, well, volumetric capture, capture on the left, and we're getting better and better at that, um, editing and narrating in AR and VR, and finally, these persistent news widgets that connect things that we care about to the spaces close by to us. I think we can enable AR to broaden our perspective instead of creating this dystopian future. Anyway, thanks.